that we put over the holes is completely solid because, well, you can't really tell, but this is where one of the piers is. I got to go fishing for the collar. The main thing is I need to make sure there are no air gaps and that this sand is as heavy and as compacted as solid as can be. Water does a really good job of doing that, especially with sand. So I have a handy dandy ag tank, which is, I guess, becoming my compaction tank. 65 gallons of water. Have a spigot here. Just going to pretty much roll the tractor up to here and just start dumping the water on. It needs most of the water, well, the tips over here, most of the water needs to occur on this side because it's sitting in an angle like this. So the closer the tip I'll get, the less the compaction will actually matter because there's hardly any sand there. So with anything, I need to make sure that this, you can see where the backhoe cut was, is the most compacted. So I'm just going to start with the water probably right here. Need to drive the tractor just a couple inches forward or so, or maybe do this. Well, looks like I had a jump in the edge problem. Got to come back with a rake or something so I don't lose all my water. Okay, well, I ended up basically just making a moat around the whole thing because it kept on jumping all over the place. Also, I lucked out on the fact that it's been raining like crazy and pretty much the sand is really heavy and mostly saturated, except just on the top, you know, where the sun hits it. But everywhere underneath is, I mean, check it out. It's pretty much holds its shape which means it has at least 20% moisture content. So I might be able to get away with just using one tote for all three of the columns of support. This is pretty much good to go. It's not dumping through the sand anymore. I'm gonna go make a moat around the other ones and then do the same thing. My moat's not tall enough on the bottom. Almost there. All right, well, all the pylons slash columns or piers or whatever you want to call them are in position. We're now over here by the tower's midpoint to hook a chain around the tower. We're using the backhoe in hopes that we can deadlift it and manipulate it up while we slowly advance the cripple jack forward and get this tower in the air. Here goes nothing. All right, well, Here's the rigging as we have it. Chains connected to pretty much the center point. Join is right here. And we have the chain going 
around this triangle piece here so the chain doesn't slide back and forth on the tower, up around the teeth a couple times, and then back down to itself with the hook. We have the stabilizers of the backhoe on the tractor down. And we're going to slowly articulate and manipulate the bucket up in the air to raise the tower. We're then going to come back in with the cripple jack and set it here and raise it and raise it. Disconnect the backhoe, come over here, grab it again, and do the same thing, moving the cripple jack forward the whole time. We'll then go to a point where the tower is almost as far as we can get it and we're going to manually manipulate it possibly at the bottom. We'll see how it goes. Might be getting a little ahead of myself. So now we're gonna do this nice and easy. Well, the cripple jack is in the air. So is the tower mostly. Deadlift it with the chain on the backhoe like I planned. Now I'm gonna try lifting it the rest of the way with the backhoe because it's a lot easier than putting the chain there and everything. See how that goes? going right along. All right, well, this is working a lot better than the chain situation because the tower is able to kind of center itself over the backhoe. We've moved the cripple jack up another four feet or so, uh, and it's supporting the tower. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the backhoe, move the tractor out, kind of drive this way, park it under again, and then deadlift again while that moves forward. This is kind of crazy, but it's working. Well, I'm eating my words from a few days ago. I said I would never do this with the whole tower attached. <laughs> oh well. We're going to try to do this with the tractor. Push it the rest of the way up. Kind of like how I let it down gently last time, but it was way shorter. Here goes. attaching a safety chain around the front of it so it doesn't try to flop the other direction. Not sure if it would, but that's why we're doing it. All right, so now we're definitely more than 45 degrees. Here goes the rest. Moment of truth. Mars in the tractor. Put the bolt in. The, the nut bolt in. in. The butt nut's on. Out of the way. Can't. It's a nylon. Yay! Nut. It's installed. It's up. It's up. It's up. Way up there. Okay, well, finally got the unit up in there. It's been a nice long project so far. Now. The goal is to attach the guy lines. Now the one, this wire that's closest to me, is the one that's going to be on the front of the triangle. And I need to basically take all three wires and kind of rotate the collar up at the top and get the guys in the correct position. But, here we go. Just going to check on everything, make sure nothing shifted since I ate lunch. Alright. Everything looks good. All the fasteners are still in place. Holding this thing locked down. That's good. You know, actually, before I do any guy line work, I'm going to come back here and tighten these fasteners on. Uh, just at least so they're 
past the nylock. I don't like that it's just a couple threads in, you know. So I got these couple crescent wrenches here and going to lock down all three fasteners on the tower. Alrighty, the guy lines are hanging in their correct positions. Left one over here. There's one that goes straight in front of the triangle. And now all the way over here, attached to the spool, just in case we need to tension it a lot, is the third guy line. So I'm gonna grab probably this 50 pound spool now and walk it over to the other point right there. Okay, well, we got this uh, cable buzzed in half. The rest of the spool's laying over there. In case I need to tow a battleship or something, I'll have it. <laughs> and I got these collars here. Pretty much expanded the maximum they can go almost. I got like an inch of threads just to be safe. Kind of used a trowel to pull the sand away from here. And now I gotta go do the same thing on the other pieces. What we're doing here on the end is we have a saddle hooked around a clip, or what is this thing called again? That's a shackle. Shackle, sorry. So we have a saddle around a shackle. This is a thimble. Thimble. Yeah. Jeez. Whatever. <laughs> well, I'm on the last collar here. It's really embarrassing how long it took me to figure out that I was pulling this the wrong way. Because these things have a left and right handed thread on them. That's why it's a turnbuckle or how it actually works. So, on this, it's righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. <laughs> it's really confusing when I've been taught my whole life. Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. That's how it goes. Okay, there. So I have about an inch or so of thread on each side of the shackle, turnbuckle, whatever you want to call this thing. Now, I'm headed back over to where we're tying the Crosby clips and tightening the cable on one of the other turnbuckles. We will have this thing tensioned down today and then I have to go into town, grab some conduit, dig another trench from the tower to the powerhouse, come up inside, connect the rest of the electronics and call this project good. For some reason, I'm not trying to jinx myself, I have like this worst feeling that it's not going to turn after everything's up in the air, but that's why I freewheeled it by hand and checked the voltage before we got to this step. We can open cable? Yep, another one. The final step. Okay, so here is the turnbuckle, which will provide tension on the cable once we have it locked through. We have a couple Crosby clips here, which are essentially holding this tight and not sliding the cable back and forth. We have a shackle. And the cable goes around the saddle. Okay, now, when you use a Crosby clip, you... U of the Crosby clip goes on the pigtail. Understood. Okay. So this U direction should be facing the side that is cut, also known as the pigtail. Can I hold that or something? Well, we don't want to. No, that's what I'm in the process of doing. Is that's why I wanted the uh, vice grips. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, so now you put the thimble in, or whatever you call that. Saddle. Okay. I call it a saddle connector, but thimble. It's a thimble. Okay. And then what you do, or what I do, is squeeze it, and it's hard because this is such a large cable, is... Hey, Aria. Oh, wow. What? Yeah, it's definitely thick cable, man. Oh, can you imagine if this was like uh, three-eighths or half-inch? Or three-quarter? You're fraying the cable, man! Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm trying to find a spot I can kneel down in the middle of all of this thorns. Uh, pull on that cable. Take. Uh, which way? This just, direction? Just kind of, yeah, take that. Like, away from you? No, towards me. Gotcha. There you go. I'm actually pushing on it. That's how stiff it is. Yeah. <laughs> Use that thing as like a noose or something, just like choke uh, it up. Uh, rigging is an art, and there's guys that um, have this done already. That have this done already, <laughs> and I just lost the nut. No, one it's, of them. Oh, it's down. Yeah, I see it. And there's guys that'll actually, you know, like they call it whipping the ends. Where they take wire and wrap it around. Oh yeah. And there's guy and there's guys that I've seen will take cable like this and splice it. Like Seems you like you need a big tool for that. They call it a fid. Jeez, wow. Okay. <laughs> so now you have to push that up in the tip, right? As I tighten this. It'll be sucked in there? Yep. Cool. And you have to Tighten them evenly. That's the other secret. To tighten them evenly. Alright, so we have one tightened down along the thimble there. Now, how far do you like spread this out? Okay. The book says for 5 16 cable that you can use two to four clips. Okay, we're using three. And I space them about uh, on the upper end, I have a foot pigtail. Mm -hmm. And so I have them about four inches apart, three and a half, four inches apart. And, and since this pigtail is like seven feet long, we're going to trim the pigtail? Yeah, we're going to trim it. Gotcha. So you're going to do the same thing, a foot pigtail with three every four inches? Yeah. Gotcha. Actually, it ends up, I probably have about, um, from the eye to the end of the pigtail, I have a foot. So I have one, you know, that's probably an inch and a half or two. Mm -hmm. And so I just space them kind of evenly, you know. Okay, so this thing's getting unwieldy, so the shackle, or whatever it's called, is getting installed on the th uh, turnbuckle. Nomenclature, it's always tricky. Alright, there we go. All right, Thomas. Okay, well, we were starting to title all of them down, and then realized that's a lot of slack. If we look up there... And so what we need to do is we're going to go install the other two like this, come with one Crosby clip, leave the other two kind of installed, and then before we tighten one of them down, we're going to pull as hard as we can and tighten the Crosby clip down. And then we're going to rely on the turnbuckle to do its job and tighten the rest of the way. Uh, in my opinion, this turnbuckle should be used for minute tensioning adjustments, not grabbing the cable and pulling it like six inches because that's my job. Next. Bianca, what are you doing with that level exactly? Trying to make sure it's not up and down. And just doing this, making sure that it's level here. And then comparing to the angle of the tower, which right now looks pretty scary falling this way. Okay, so we need to do what? We need to tighten this one, it looks like, or loosen that one, or do both. Oh my goodness, we're done, my friends. It is like the best feeling ever. I can't even believe it for us amateurs to have accomplished this. The tower was free. The cable was donated. <laughs> it is amazing how... Everything has come together to get this up and running for the farm.
It's a really, really good feeling. Huge undertaking, but time, repeated effort, slow and steady, we got it done. Now, I'm going to break for a while, go purchase the conduit, and get to digging a trench whoosh, all the way to the powerhouse. That's something for another day. The tower has been erected. Thanks for watching. I hope you all had a great Monday. See you next time, alright?